In every game of sport, there's a story. Whether in the form of rivalries, injuries, management changes, there's always an underlying narrative that makes sport play out like its own heated, intense style of theatre. It's over! Cleveland is a city of champions once again! The Cavaliers are NBA champions! But is it possible for sports video games to replicate the drama of their real life counterparts and successfully establish their own believable and engaging narrative? It's not as if there's been a shortage of sports titles attempting to recapture the glory of their real world influences over the years. So by using a variety of examples from street fighting to boxing, basketball, and football, we can answer whether the many attempts to imbue sports video games with memorable stories have actually been successful. But first, it's worth asking, what role does a story play in a video game? Stories in games generally provide context and motivation for the gameplay. This may be as simple as an incoming demon invasion, or as complex as a globetrotting adventure that engages you into the action. And while directed cinematics, voice acting, and scripted sequences have elevated the way games tell their stories, at their core they still operate as ancillary frameworks that stop you asking why and how am I here. Sports video games, on the other hand, have historically been quite literal translations of their real-life activities. I mean, what need is there for a story when playing as your favourite basketball player or driving your favourite car is all the context you need to enjoy a game? Though, with a world of opportunity to tell unique and dynamic stories, developers would eventually begin experimenting with narrative design in sports titles. Look out! Def Jam Fight for NY tells the story of a nameless underdog trying to make a name for himself in New York City's underground fighting scene. After saving a powerful gang leader from certain incarceration, the player must craft their avatar using a witness's testimony to produce a mugshot. Even though the story in Def Jam is merely a skeleton to give context to the gameplay, the cinematic opening still manages to establish the world's gritty tone and your place inside it. Well, if he stays, He's got to be able to carry his own weight. Can you fight? I could take care of myself. We gonna see about that. Though, after Def Jam's opening cinematics run their course, you'll have to rely on your phone as the primary method of storytelling. Let's update your look. I got some new ideas. See you soon. Whether in the form of voicemails or texts, these messages create a limited but capable sense of continuity within the world, advertising sales in shops, getting praised by your peers, and abused by would-be opponents. Anytime you want to go one-on-one, -on -one, just let me know. Using a crude world map to navigate between locations also alludes to a much larger tangible world, even if the list of locations is rudimentary. Sure, some fine looking thing things in here tonight, boy. Every eye's on you, partner. You the man. So who you gonna take home, huh? In an attempt to implement some form of sexual investment for the player comes the bizarre design decision to pick a girlfriend. Hey, she's with me. Why am I not convinced? <laughs> I said, back off. If it weren't already bad enough to suggest a man must simply pick the woman of his choosing, you then must fight for the right to leave with her. All of this coming without the woman having any say in the matter, as if bare-knuckled brawls were the usual transaction to obtain a partner. Early attempts to inject video games with basic narrative design would prove primitive, but also essential as building blocks for what was to come next. A move towards more cinematic, scripted storytelling, Need for Speed The Run mixes frenetic cross-country driving with sleek, melodramatic cutscenes. Word is you made a wrong turn, Jack. No one ever got a head sit on their hands, how did they, Sam? Cast into a trash compactor to meet his certain demise, the player takes control of protagonist Jack Rourke, who quickly becomes embroiled in a nationwide race to escape his unsavory enemies. 
The monotone delivery of the run's dialogue makes cutscenes gratuitously bland, if not occasionally hilarious due to how uninspired the voice actors appear. You ready? Locked and loaded. There's over 200 other drivers and about 3,000 miles of asphalt between here and New York. Sounds good to me. Whenever outside of the driver's seat, you're treated to a variety of quick time events that see you escaping police and performing death defying accolades you'd probably expect to see in a Michael Bay film. As with most quick time events, the act of performing such ridiculous feats is negated by the blunt simplicity of mindlessly tapping a single button. Otherwise, the story operates as a fantastic narrative device to legitimise a vast array of varied environments that the player must navigate in rapid succession. What? Speak up! Las Vegas, top 150 out. Okay, got it. Even though Need for Speed The Run's dialogue is cringeworthy and its clunky quick time events outdated even for 2011, its story still maintains a breakneck pace that complements the gameplay without compromising its momentum or stagnating its enjoyment. For the most part. After a handful of subpar attempts, it was still yet to be seen if stories in sports video games could actually elevate gameplay and not simply accompany it. Fight Night Champion epitomises everything a narrative-driven sports title should be, with believable characters, great voice acting, and a seamless flow between cinematics and gameplay. The only way that the title is through me! Not if nobody can beat me. Oh, you think so? You don't know who you're fucking with. Dad! You've been listening to this stupid old man! Framed by a shady boxing promoter and sentenced to five years in prison, pro boxer Andre Bishop must overcome his troubled past, all the while staging a comeback at the heavyweight title. By opening in the midst of a prison fight, Champion is able to separate Bishop from the formality of professional boxing and humanise his story right from the offset, making the first fight Bishop encounters one of personal motivation and not for money, sponsorships or a win-loss record, allows the player to become invested in Fight Night Champion's characters outside of a conventional sporting environment. Welcome to the real world, baby! <laughs> the pacing of Champion's story also creates a graceful flow between cutscenes and gameplay. The omission of any menu navigation once you start the campaign is largely to thank for this, as you're whisked from training sections to cutscenes, fights, then back to exposition without any stagnation. There's a lot to be said for how this fluency contributes to actually feeling like Bishop once you step into the ring. The story even manages to play with perspective as a storytelling device. Nearing Champion's closing moments, you take control of the story's antagonist Isaac Frost as he faces off against Bishop's younger brother. There it is! He goes down! Experiencing Frost's overwhelming power firsthand simultaneously establishes him as a formidable opponent and also provides motivation for Bishop to face off against him in the game's final fight. Leaves another combination. Teddy Frost. Big plus shot. It's all over. There's a new heavyweight champion of the world, and his name is Andre. Fight Night Champion proved that sports video games could be enriched by a well-executed story. Though only lasting a handful of hours, it was still unclear whether a story could sustain a gameplay experience spanning dozens and dozens of hours. Very recent examples of long-term narrative design, FIFA 17 and NBA 2K17, approach narrative design with very similar ideas, but each to a very different effect. 
NBA 2K's My Career Mode allows the player to sculpt their very own bespoke avatar, while FIFA places you into the studded boots of Alex Hunter in its own spin of a story mode titled The Journey. Both modes have you rising in the ranks of each sport's respective league, and while NBA 2K17 does a fine job of kicking off the action at a collegiate level, FIFA 17 goes even further back to Hunter's childhood. This intimate glimpse into Hunter's past establishes the grounded tone of the story and, similar to that of Fight Night Champion, separates the player from the sport right from the beginning, putting character first and the sport second. I want you to have this. I scored my 100th goal with that. February 1969, Coventry City away. Left foot volley. Sweet as a nut. The dialogue of the journey succeeds in delivering believable characters and, more importantly, an authentic world that makes Hunter feel like a real person. I wish Dad could be here, Mum. Hey. Today's about you, Alex. Visual reminders of Hunter's position in the team's hierarchy also made it really easy to chart his progression from a no-name scrub to one of the most explosive players in the whole league. All right, sir. It's Alex Hunter at Anfield! More than any other game I played for this video, I truly felt that in FIFA 17, the character I was controlling on the field was the exact same character I'd watched in the cutscenes. It's those moments when you feel a tangible connection with a character and then become an active agent in their story that the magic of video games as an interactive medium becomes evident. Ultimately, I was more invested in my gameplay experience as Hunter as a direct result of the engaging narrative design. Alternatively, NBA 2K17 uses an actual gameplay mechanic to reinforce the focus of its story. After being drafted into the league, you are introduced to Justice Young, played by Michael B. Jordan. While your relationship with Justice gets off to a rough start, you soon become an inseparable pair on and off the court. To emphasize and reward your on-court chemistry with Justice, developer Visual Concepts implemented a brand new feature for the series. Brazenly dubbed Orange Juice, this basic mechanic activates after you and Justice assist each other on consecutive buckets, eventually allowing you to swap between Justice and yourself on the fly. Again, Los Angeles. Oh, great ball movement there. There's a hidden genius to this mechanic, because by taking control of Justice, the player can immediately become invested in him, ensuring he becomes the centre of the player's attention. The vehement visual feedback also tries its heart out to highlight the bond being developed between you and Justice. What you like about the OJ tandem is that they both seem to feed off each other when they get it going. They become unstoppable. Here's the captain. He had 25 points in the win against San Antonio. But what stood out for me was his gorgeous... Orange Juice is very much a gameplay-centric approach to narrative design, in which the player's actions on the court begin to make an impact in the course of the narrative. But more so, the way Orange Juice creates an awareness and chemistry between you and Justice cements, in the gameplay itself, the relationship you begin to forge off the court. In comparison, FIFA starts its narrative investment off the field, with grounded, well-written characters and cinematic direction, while NBA 2K begins it on the court with gameplay mechanics that establish, fortify, and contextualize your off-court relationships. I bring you the president of hoops. Oh, the president of hoops. Good to meet you. I'm on it. I'm gonna need you to hook him up, give him that presidential cut. The presidential cut? Come on, you know, hook him up. Presidential cut. We do regular haircuts here, so I hope you like just regular haircut. So, in conclusion, do stories make sports games better? Yes, very much so. The use of well-written and believable characters coupled with sharp cinematic direction can definitely elevate gameplay above that of a standard sports title. That being said, not all design elements help contribute to this. Quick time events can feel like missed opportunities to allow the player to take control of the action, and social media was often overused as a means of world building. By playing through a number of titles released over the course of 13 years and seeing the progress developers made in that short time, I'm filled with a lot of hope that the best examples are still yet to come, as new and innovative iterations are just on the horizon. 
What a talent, this teenager is. The mayor. Right on. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. It's been a really long time since my last upload, so it was an awesome feeling to finally get this one done. Obviously, I wasn't able to touch on every single game I wanted to in this video, so please hit up the comments below if you have any other examples of stories in sports games that you've enjoyed in the past, and I'll try to respond to as many as possible. Like this video and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more content from me in the future, and again, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.